Okay, so today uh, it's a quick video about dead logs. Uh, we're gonna see how we can use uh, the standard log function in C++ to prevent dead logs. So uh, first look at uh, our scenarios here. Uh, we have two threads that is uh, it's gonna access uh, some common uh, objects and uh, we want this so in, in this in this object we have two functions accessor one accessor two and they both use uh, two mutex mutex one and mutex two in a, a different order uh, the accessor one will try to log a mutex one and mutex two later and access two will do the reverse. We will try to lock. We we'll lock mutex two first, and the mutex one for, uh, later. Uh, so that caused a, a dead lock problem, uh, where when access one will lock mutex one, and before it lock mutex two, access two locks mutex two, and then either of those functions will be able to lock the second lock. Uh, so to prevent that. Uh, the standard C++11 uh, has uh, has provided a std log function where it will make sure the mutex will log. Uh, so the log function will, we, can, we can pass in any number of uh, mutex into the function. It will try to log them uh, by preventing their logs. So if any of the sequential mutex fail logging, uh, this will try to unlock the ones that previously successful. So that will prevent uh, uh, deadlocks. And so the use is, is simple. Uh, we use lock to, to uh, std lock to lock the mutex we want to lock. And then we are, we're gonna still use uh, lock up to lock guard is, is, is a guard where when the lock, uh, lock guard out of the scope of the function, it, it, it will, will unlock automatically. So the lock guards of lock one, lock two, We'll just simply uh, have a second parameter, which what we have passing is to ask the log one, log two to simply uh, adopt the already locked mutex uh, rather than trying to log again. Uh, so that was using the std adopt lock, and both uh, it's, uh, it will be applied to both functions. And by doing that, when the when accessor one has locked the mutex one, mutex two, uh, access two. Uh, won't be able to lock either, uh, won't be locking mutex2 and, and won't be uh, waiting for mutex1. And same for accessor2. So by doing that, uh, where we we set up two functions, uh, two threads, thread1, thread2, and we'll try to access the accessor1, accessor2 uh, on a different time interval, and and we run that, and, and that will basically uh, prevent the, uh, the deadlock, uh, very easy to use. And uh, yeah, that's it, everyone.